Isaiah chapter 37. Haggai, the 37th book in the Bible. <clears throat> now we pick off where we live in verse, uh, in chapter 36. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it. What Rabshika has been saying. His men came in and told him all the words and how the people on the wall heard it in the Jewish, la in the Jewish uh, language. He rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. Now look at that. And he sent Elkayim, who was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. There we go. This is the, the book who the book's named after. So it gives us a time date that Isaiah is in the times of Hezekiah. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble. Now, Hezekiah doesn't come to the Isaiah. Elkayim, Shebna, Elkayim, Shebna, and the elders of the priests in sackcloth show up at Isaiah. This is a day of trouble. This is what they tell Isaiah and rebuke and blasphemy. What's the blasphemy? Everything that uh, Rashika was saying about God. For the children are come to birth and there is no strength to bring forth. So the people on the walls that heard Rabshika are terrified. They've come to the point, we're going to fight, we're going to defend. But the words made them unable. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words do hurt. So the people heard what Rav Shika said in the, in the Jewish language and they took it to heart. And there is a law of Moses. If you're going to fight a battle, you're to ask the people, anybody fearful and, and faint-hearted, you can go. If anybody who's, who's married a wife and has not enjoyed her, Matter of fact, it also says that he has a year of freedom away from work and war to be with his wife, to cheer her up. If you have planted a vineyard and have not eaten the fruit thereof, you can go. Had Hezekiah, you know, anybody fearful and all that, you can go. A lot of them left. So that's what the statement here, you know, the time of birth and there's just no strength. It may be the Lord thy God will hear the Lord thy God. That's a little particular statement. Thy God? Shouldn't it be our God? And Hezekiah is right. The thy God will hear the words of Rabshika, whom the king of Syria has his master has sent to reproach the living God. There's the blasphemy. And will reprove the words which the Lord thy God has heard. Wherefore lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is left. So Hezekiah acknowledges God hears everyone. Rabshidna is a Gentile, dead dog, military leader who has opened up his mouth too much and God heard what he said. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard. Wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Isaiah is speaking for God. And God says, you blasphemed me, me. And you run that right back up to verse 3. Who's the blasphemy? 
God said it's against me. So what's blaspheming God? Open up your mouth and saying God can't do. God can't do nothing. God is in no defense of a man in his army. Behold, I, God, will send a blast upon him. And he shall hear horsemen and, and tanks and missiles. And, no. He shall hear a rumor. I mean, no military force? And return to his own land. And I, God, will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rabshika returned and found the king of Syria, Sennacherib, warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And he heard that rumor, say, concerning Tarhaka, king of Ethiopia, he has come forth to make war with thee. And when he heard it, he sent messages to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Right here comes another message, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee. Ooh. Saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the, into the hand of the king of Assyria. Your God ain't going to win against us. That's what he's saying. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands, not the land of God you're not, by destroying them utterly. And shalt thou be delivered? Yeah. Have the small G-O-D-S of the nations delivered them which my father has destroyed? No, of course not. As Gozen, Gozen, however you want to pronounce that, Haran, Rispa, and the children of Eden, which were in Telsiar. Where is the king of Hama, and the king of Arphad, and the kings of the city of Sepharvaim, Hina, and Ivo? Well, evidently, yes, the Assyrians have gotten victory and glory over these cities. And it's not God's. The Assyrian army was over powerful and over strength of the city and the men that were thereof. Syrians could have had double the military strength. The people of these cities could have been weak. They could have had the flu. Not God. And if it is God's, well, these gods are terrible gods. And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messenger and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord again and spread it before the Lord. In my lifetime, I've gotten a couple letters that I've spread out before the Lord. And the Lord, see, I've done the Hezekiah prayer. I don't remember what they were. There was such a big thing. I don't remember what they were, but there were a couple letters that said, Lord, look. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, and this is his prayer, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwelleth between the cherubim, thou art the God. Uh-oh. There's a big G on that one. Capital G. Even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, Thou has made heaven and earth. Uh oh, that's the God of all gods. That is the God that created. Incline thy ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thy eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib. Now, he's not saying God is deaf and, and blind. He's saying, God, you're so holy, you're so great, you got to take care of everything in the universe. You just lend me your ear. Of all the things that you hear, you hear the birds singing. You're hearing people praying to you. You're hearing the waterfalls. You're hearing the water. You're hearing rain. You're hearing lions call out for you. Can I have your ear for a moment? Of a truth, Lord, the king of Assyria 
have laid waste all the nations in their country. It's a true statement. And have cast their gods, G, Saul, O, D, S, onto the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. The gods, the, the small G, O, D, S. Now therefore, O Lord our God, capital G, O, D, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, even thou only. Okay, God, Assyria has come in and destroyed all these people and claimed to, to kill their gods. Now, God, you step up the God of gods and you step up to the plate and show them your testimony. This guy has been flapping his gums and boasting in what he has done. And look at all the gods that I've killed. Look at all the gods I've thrown in the fire. And I'm going to come and I'm going to put your God in the fire. God, you show him you're the God of fire. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent unto Hezekiah, saying, Anybody go to Isaiah? Or did the Lord tap Isaiah in the ear saying, I got a message for you. Go to King Hezekiah. That's the inspiration of the scriptures. God ta taps Isaiah the prophet and says, I got a message. Go to, go to Hezekiah. Hezekiah doesn't, doesn't know how this prayer is going to be answered, even if it's going to be answered verbally. And then in comes Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Is he still there in the temple praying? In comes, in comes Isaiah. Hey, Hezekiah, thus saith the Lord. Hezekiah has no idea that this is going to be the answer to his prayer. That God speaking to you through me, for me? The Lord God of Israel, whereas thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, now he, hey, that's the prayer. Hezekiah has gotten a confirmation that God has heard his prayer and going to answer the prayer. This is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at thee. You know, we're not paying attention to you, king. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? Against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thy eyes on high? Even against the Holy One of Israel. Uh-oh. You angered the wrong one. By thy servants. Rabbi Shukha and others. By thy servants hast thou reproached the Lord. And has said. Now God is going to quote. From 24 to 27 what? Sennacherib said. Isaiah is going to tell Hezekiah what Sennacherib said. And Isaiah has no idea anything about Sennacherib. But this is from God. So you better watch out. God records your word. And Matthew tells us by the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will give an account of every idle word. Now, 24 to 27 are idle words. And they are recorded in the Holy Bible. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. These words are going to be forever. By the multitude of my chariots, Sennacherib, am I, Sennacherib, come up to the height of the mountains. Look at where look where I am. To the sides of Lebanon. I will cut down the tall cedars thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof. I will enter into the height of his border, and the forest of his carmel. I'm going to go and I'm going to kill all these lands, cut all their trees down, and build me. I have digged and drunk water, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. 
true. Maybe you have. You need water. So what's he do? If this is true, a true statement that he has done, he reverted rivers away from the city so they couldn't have nothing to drink. So he thirsts them out. Has thou not heard long ago how I have done it? Now look at it, look at how long ago. Look at the eagle on this guy, Sennacherib. A piece of dirt, dust in the wind. In ancient times, how old can this guy be? Even if he's 60, 70 years old, ancient times, that I have formed it. Now have brought to pass that thou should be in the laid waste, defense cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants were of small powder. They were dismayed and confronted. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetop, and as corn blasted before it is grown up. These people are just nothing in my path. I'm going to go in there and mow them over. But I, God, know thy abode. I know where you're leaving. I know where you sleep. I know where you are. And thy going out. I know where you're going. And thy coming in. I know where you're coming from. And thy rage against me. Sennacherib has a personal vendetta of uh, uh, anger against God. We deal with like, people like that all the time in the street ministry. They're not angry at us. They're angry with God. And they won't get right like Sennacherib. Because thy rage against me, God, and thy tomo is come up into my ears, God's ears. How? Hezekiah's prayer. Will I, God, put my hook in thy nose? Ouch. And my bridle in thy lips. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to tell you what to do and where to go. I'm going to make you a horse. And I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. And this shall be a sign unto thee. I believe he's turned to Hezekiah. Ye shall eat this year such as groweth itself. And the second year, that which springeth of the same. And of the third year, sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. There's been a siege of the land and now there's food. And the raiment that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. That's a healthy plant. For all of Jerusalem shall go forth a raiment. And they that escaped out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, shall do this. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Syria, back to the king of Syria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the, by the same shall he return. He's going to do a U-turn. And shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. Don't you think Hezekiah now? Thank you, Lord. I've got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. You've got an answer to prayer, and God's going to answer his prayer. He's going to defend the city. And they're going to have food, and God's going to take care of them. You just see him hugging Isaiah, and Isaiah hugging him, and they're just having a joyful time in the Lord. For I, God, will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Now, that just must have brought joy. We're going to get victory. It's going to take care of us. Then, then, Isaiah, and I'm being kind of cruel, Isaiah has any time to pick up his hat and walk out the door. Then, 
the angel of the Lord. The angel. That's the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. The angel of the Lord. That's the angel of the Lord that said, Joseph, you need to take the mother and the baby out of here. That is the angel of the Lord that spoke to uh, Hagar about her son. The first place the angel of the Lord shows up in the Bible. And explains to her all about her son. The angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians. Now how? Alright. Smote. A hundred and forty, a hundred and four score and five thousand. One angel killed a hundred and eighty five thousand dead. So, let me give you a little interesting fact here. In Matthew twenty six fifty three, a legion. Jesus said, I can call down a legion of angels. A legion of the Roman government is three thousand men. 3,000 times 12, because he said I can call down 12 regions of angels, is 36,000 angels times 185,000 men. 100,000. 6,666,000 men would have been wiped off the earth. Now, the population in 2013 in the world was 7 billion people. And they don't even break a sweat. And when they arose early in the morning, this is a contradiction. Behold, they were all dead corpse. How could they be dead and wake up in the morning? It didn't say he wiped them all out. But the, the 185,000 that they were killed, the rest of them woke up and found 185,000 dead. It doesn't say the whole entire army was destroyed. God left enough of them to go back and say, we lose. We just woke up in the morning and 185,000 of, of our troops were dead. So Sennacherib, king of Syria, departed. That, that scared the fire out of him. He's going to come into a city and kill all these people, take over all the cities, all the gods of the world, and all the people in the land. Look how great I am. 185,000 dead. Bye. See you. Not coming back. Bye. And it doesn't even say that the Syrians knew it was an angel. They just, 185,000 dead. Bye. You mean this guy who's against God? He knew God had a part in it, at least that much. Whether he knew it was an angel or what. And it shows you that Sennacherib, the king of Syria, departed. He was there and he didn't die, so not all the people died. And it came to pass. I love this. He's been ranking on God of the Bible, the God of the Hebrews, the God that's the creator, the God that's all, all of the earth, the one and only God that Isaiah will tell us about. And he's been, all these gods are destroyed, the gods are these people, the gods are those people, and the gods are that people. I killed them all. Look who I am. Your God ain't going to die. My man, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to take your God, and I'm going to throw him in the fire and take that altar to Hezekiah. And say, I'm going to destroy it. And it came to pass, as he was worshiping in the house of Nishrach, his God, get that, know that. His God, Nishra, Nishna, however you want to say it, who cares? All right, what is Sennacherib's God? Ready? Of all the gods in the world, that, oh boy, what do you name this boy for? Admir Melech and Shisarir, his sons. All right. He is worshiping his God in the house of his gods. His sons walk in the room. His sons smote him with the sword. Uh, you would think that this God, while he's in his in his house praying to his God, worshiping Mr. Sennacherib, 
turn around. Your boys are going to kill you. This guy that this guy is worshiping at his death doesn't even warn him. Doesn't do nothing. Let's his two. I mean, that's not that's not comical enough. Here are two boys of his own come in and wipe him out with a sword in front of his God. So you can write in this room where Sennacher is now dead before his God. You can write dead God, dead man. And they escaped. You mean Sennacherib's God didn't do nothing against these guys? They escaped to the land of Armenia and Esther Denon, Esther Denon, I don't know I just don't call him George and Fred and Charlie. Esther Denon, his son, the third son, reigned in his stead. All these gods I've destroyed and conquered, and he dies before his god. And his two sons get away, and one takes over the kingdom. Now, don't you think that all the angels in heaven looking down at that one say, <laughs> Oh, look at that idiot down there. <laughs> oh, all the angels laughing. He dies before God. Small g-o-d. By God. Capital g-o-d. That's the end of a man's life. And you go back, oh, all these gods, I mean, have all the gods and the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed as in God and in you. And Mr. Sennacherib, can you stand before your God, small g-o-d, and survive? Nope, you're dead. In hell, burning. Maybe scratching your head and say, what was that? What the heck happened to me? I don't know. We don't know if you, you know how you die. What if you don't know how you die? What if he, in hell he didn't know that his own son's going? He's just, what the heck happened? I'm worshiping God, small g o d, and now I'm in hell. What the? That'd been a great end of a life for a great man. For all have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. For all, for there's none righteous, no, not one. It's point unto man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. God says, I'll get him in his God. I'll have him die before his God. That's a laugh. That's comical. I have a God that has a sense of humor. Amen. Glory to God. The guy is laying dead. And we're not even told how long he lies there. It says that his sons, his sons left, escaped. We don't even know how long he lied there. To the next service. Next service. Monday or whatever they they serve. There he is. A world renowned soldier, world renowned leader, lying dead in front of his God that couldn't even tell him. Psst, always coming to kill you.